who would like to have too many opportunities in business? Yeah. Right here? Yeah. Okay. I was thinking you might. Yeah. Just check that off the list. Well, you know, some people think, well, I've got a business plan. I'm ready to go. Well, you know, business plans are kind of important, but there's a lot more than just a business plan because if you don't share the business plan with anybody, guess what? Nobody knows what your plan is. No one knows what you want to accomplish. So you have to get out there and share it with people. I mean, some people think cold calling is a great way to do things, and sometimes it is. But I like to win more than I like to lose. And I know that cold calling is a very low percentage versus face-to-face -face networking. And face-to-face -face networking is what I do. I don't cold call. I'm too busy, luckily, because of all the networking I do and all the referrals I get, because I put myself out there, introduce myself to people, and do what I say I'm going to do. So I guess for a second, think how many people are in your network? How many people do you know? Just think about that number for a second. You don't have to announce it. You can even write it down. How many people do you know? This could be from maybe a religious organization, your neighborhood association, kids sports, whatever it might be. Who, how many people do you know? Think about that for a second. Now, what they say is that's your network. Everybody in your network knows 250 people. Do your math. How many people are really in your network? So think of that number you just had in your head and multiply it by 250. Or simply just take, divide it by four, then make that 1,000. That made 1,000. So think about it. How many people do you have in that network? What are the prongs of your network? Think of it this way. There's not just one part of your network, hopefully. Hopefully there's multiple. As I said before, it could be a sports team your kids are on. Possibly it could be where you work. It could be a lot of different places. There are a lot of prongs to your network. For instance, three of my about seven or eight, well, I've got E4E, as Bill said, we're part of this E4E group. LinkedIn, because there are some people I don't interact with other than just on LinkedIn. And then I also do uh, BNI, Business Networking International, and I do some other networking groups as well. So what happens is I have different ways to connect, and sometimes people do overlap, so maybe that 250 number might be a little high. But again, even if you take 10% off, you're still looking at a lot of people you didn't realize that you, you know, were interested in doing business with. The question, though, is how many people really know what you do and can be an advocate for you? How many people know the business you're in and what you're looking for? Because a lot of times you might realize, you know, I do this, and they go, yeah, you do this. You, I have an office supply company. You sell office supplies. Great. Well, it just passes right on over their head. It doesn't really sink in what, they, what I really do to them until I ask them, until I engage them and make them realize, like, oh, I've got a printer at home. I guess I shouldn't have gone to Office Depot and paid retail for that cartridge last week. Well, I'm right here. So it's making, getting people engaged in what you do. Okay. Now, what we're going to share today are some strategies. Some I've borrowed from other people. They're not all mine, but some are mine. It's kind of a mix and match. Some have been adjusted. And keep in mind, we have a lot of different industries in this room, so everything I say is not going to necessarily be just for your business. I do a lot of business to business. There's some business to consumer that's out there as well. So make sure you think about how this can relate to you, not just what I'm saying for my business. I'm showing what's worked for me for business to business, but realize that also there's other markets out there, so think of how it can be applied to what you do and how you can help the people in your network think of you. So next, what I want you to think about is know the type of industry or person you'd like to meet. Because here's the thing, if you don't know who you're looking to meet, how can you meet them? You've got to know exactly who your target market is, who you want to do business with, and also how to get to those people. Because you can think in your head, wow, it'd be great to know a trapeze artist, but standing on the end of your street looking for a trapeze artist probably is not going to be very successful. You might want to go to a circus or net worth people who are in a circus or know people in the circus. That's really what you're looking for. Okay? So what I want you to do, we're going to, some people like to waste time. I don't. I like to go right to the point. So what we're going to do is I'd like for you to pull out something called the referral generator. Okay? Right here, it's in your stack. Go and pull it out. And this is where the interactive part starts. I want you to list three of the best industries or people, depending on what you do, who are referrals for you. Could it be a soccer mom? Could it be a professional? Who is it? Write, write those people down as specific as you possibly can. Take a second to do that for me. Next, I want you to look at the next section. It says, who are the best connected people in your network? Who can help you get to that trapeze artist that you want to get to know? 
Who knows a lot of people that would be willing to buy into you and what you do and connect you to the people that you want to meet? The next thing is I want you to think about who knows what you do but isn't fully engaged. And that's not a bad thing. You just haven't asked them to target for you yet. Who are three people in your network that know you, know what you do, but you're like, man, they should be able to give me more referrals than this. I just need to sit down and talk to them and get them engaged in me, helping me out. Now, again, you want to help other people too, and we'll get to that in a minute. But who are three people that you know that you're like, man, they've got to be able to help me better than this. I know that if I just spend a little time with them, they'd be willing to buy into me and help me connect with those people that I'm looking to target. Who are those three people? The next section is places or associations that can bring you referrals. Where do you go that you haven't even thought of asking people for referrals? Is it the neighborhood picnic? Is it the dog park? Where do you go where you could talk to people and just strike up a conversation and possibly get referrals you didn't even think of before? It, for instance, I had someone that I do some networking with. I sat with him on Saturday. I've known him for eight months. And he spoke the other day and finally clicked. Someone I've known for 10 years, I should have referred to him from day one, but never clicked that that's what I needed to do until I heard it just a slightly different way. I'm like, duh, I knew that. And it just didn't register with me. So sometimes when we, the way we phrase things will help engage people, even just a little tweak. Sometimes adjusting your message by a word or two will actually get people to listen a different way. But think about that. And finally, what are some of your hobbies, or volunteering, and interests that could also be um, sources of referrals? Do you help at a local walk or run? Do you maybe volunteer at the pet shelter? What, what do you do that could possibly turn into referrals over time for you? So hopefully something on that sheet, do we need, do we need a minute? Because I don't want to rush you through. So this is one of the most important parts. This we'll take another second here. Okay, so hopefully you have some ideas you didn't have before, just a starting point of how you can maybe get a little more connected, help your um, network grow, and more people you can do business with this early on. The next thing is, it never hurts to make a list. Last time I spoke at a networking event, I handed out a list. I do business with a lot of CPAs and lawyers, okay? I handed out a list of about 40 of those people. 20 of those people, I got introductions to because I just asked because I was specific versus saying I'm looking for anyone who owns a printer well that doesn't really bring anyone to mind but I say anyone who owns a printer in this room wearing a green logoed shirt that might narrow it down a little bit I don't know if you know anybody but I'm wearing a green logoed shirt and I have a printer so the more specific you can be the better so don't ask for something very general I'm looking for anybody that has skin <laughs> uh, well you know there's very few people I know that don't have skin and they're not doing so well, I'd like to say. They're probably not target customers. But if you can think of maybe people who... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that was for my Rodan Fields ladies. Yes, that was definitely it. Uh-huh, <laughs> laughing over there. But no, the, the whole point is, be specific. Maybe people who have skin who have little girls. Maybe people who have skin who, have, who go to church every Sunday religiously. I mean, whatever it is, find some way to segment the general statement of, I'm looking for anybody breathing. Because you know, we all know people breathing, but it doesn't make you think of anything specific. You want to be more specific, okay? I mean, I do business with single home offices up to hospitals, but I don't say I do business with everybody. I do business with CPAs and do business with lawyers. Now, granted, some of you in here who are not those type of fields are my customers that are in this room, but the whole point is, it's one of those things you've got to be specific. They'll figure out, hopefully, that you work with 
more than just CPAs. Yes, Bill? Mark, uh, how do you handle it when you get engaged in a conversation with people and they're not in your target market? So how you, you, done good, you did a good job here of saying, hey, here's who your target market is. How do you handle those? Because I find that frequently maybe half the people that I meet really probably aren't. We don't have anything. So how do we get people engaged that are not in our, tar our specific target market? Honestly, I ask them questions. I talk to them, I find ways to engage them, and I kind of go around, kind of in a circle where I ask them questions until I get to some place that's a common ground. The other thing that I do is anytime they mention anybody, and I, I start with things, oh, what'd you do last night? Well, they tell me, oh, my husband and I, da, da, da. Well, oh, really, what's your husband's name? Oh, it's... George, great. What, do you, what does George do? Well, why did I ask what George does? Well, first of all, I do care and I want to help. Next, I might be able to put George on my bench of people. I have a bench of over a thousand people that when I need something for one of my clients, I go to my bench. For instance, I have a, an organization that is a customer and what their whole purpose is, so when people move to town and don't know anybody, it's called STL Transplant. It's a great organization. And they help get people networked into the community. The question I asked him was, what can I help you with that has nothing to do with office supplies? Nothing at all. And he, he pauses over the phone for a second and said, well, I'm looking to meet an electrician. I'm looking to meet a plumber. And you're probably not going to know a realtor that speaks Spanish. Well, not only did I have everything he asked for, but I also referred him through the realtor to a mortgage person that speaks Spanish as well. Now, I'm not now just a supplier of printer cartridges, office supplies, and paper, I am his resource. I want to be that resource because he's going to think of me anytime he needs absolutely anything as ridiculous as he actually asked me if I knew someone who had um, African American women's hair. I didn't have that connection at this moment, but you never know if I have it, I know where I'm going with it. Yeah, Don, you got that for me? Okay, Don, we'll talk later. <laughs> I, Don, I, got, I have scissors, does that help or not? Okay, so do, there you go. Now I've got a connection. Bada boo, we got it. See, look at that, networking live and in person. No, but make a list of the people you'd like to meet because you never know who might happen to know them. A good example, I was at a networking meeting and someone wasn't even there. They had somebody actually speaking, saying what they did. And they asked for one of my customers who I know the owner of, I visit every week, and within the afternoon, he had an appointment with the correct person at that company because he asked. I would have never thought he'd want, want to meet them. But he knew why you wanted to meet him. So be specific. Come up with a list. That's also a great way to use your LinkedIn because you never, when someone says, you know, I'm looking to meet Joe Smith at Johnson & Company, well, guess what? I go to my LinkedIn. I have over 1,000, close to 1,100 people that I know well, and you just never know who's connected. It could be Anna right back there. She might know that person. Anna, didn't I do that to you the other day? Yes. Okay. Now, it just so happened that in this case, she didn't happen to know him well enough, which is fine, it's gonna happen, but you know what, a lot of times, people do know people well enough. So, what you wanna do is, when you go out and network, first of all, you wanna be memorable. I mean, think about how many people you meet when you go to a networking event. Do you meet one, two, 20, 25? How are they gonna remember you? The goal is to be memorable enough that they're gonna remember you a year later. I love the question of people walk up to me dressed like this, well, what do you do for a living? I'm a mortician, what do you do? <laughs> you are? No, I'm not a mortician. But the whole point is, is I'm being memorable. It's so they remember me. Because you know what? Yes, it's, it's a reactionary question. Like, do you want fries with that? But the whole point is, I'm wearing the shirt that says what I do, and I, I kind of joke, jokingly play it off, but it's as much to be memorable as anything else. So what's gonna make you memorable when you go network? Are you gonna be the person who goes, get my cards, take them, take them, take them, take them. Well, you know what? I don't remember take them, take them, take them. I'll be honest, take them, take them, take them means it gets folded, put in my pocket, and thrown away when I get to the office. Because I don't need more business cards. I mean, if you've ever seen my desk, it's got one or two, <clears throat> couple of business cards on there. But the point is, is that if you don't become memorable, why would I want to get to know you? I'm sure I know with the networking that I do and the networking that all of you do, five people that do what they do. Why would you want to pick someone who just throws a card and runs? Is that really the relationship you want? Here's my card. Hope it didn't hit you in the head. See you, have a good day. Bye for me. I mean, it sounds silly, we're laughing, but think of how many people you know that does that, that actually that do that. I mean, seriously. 
I mean, who wants to build a relationship with somebody like that? Well, you can't. They didn't give you a chance. They're already three people down the row throwing more cards. I mean, I guess they love, I guess they're trying to set a world record for handing out business cards. I don't know. I mean, I've seen some people, some people throw them on the table. So, oh, here, everyone, take one of my cards. Great, I'll leave it right there. Excellent. Glad we could help. Okay. So the other thing is, is when you're networking, you want to make sure you have a quick blurb, something that is going to get their attention and they're going to remember you by. Like, for instance, I say, I work with busy professionals taking care of their needs by catering to their office supplies so they can do their job. Something that makes them want to say, oh, really? Well, what kind of office supplies do you have? Who do you work with? Versus saying, hi, I'm Mark. I sell stuff for your office. Yay me. Who's going who's gonna to care? Nobody is. Because I didn't, I didn't care enough to be creative, to be informative, to be exciting. Why would they care about what I do? Because if I'm not going to buy into myself, why should they? I mean, think about it. Think about for just a second, when you're at a networking event, how you present yourself and what you say in five to 10 seconds. Think about that for just one second. The next thing is, be prepared even if they're not. I love going networking and someone goes, oh man, I forgot my cards. Not to worry, I'm ready to go. Here, here write down your name and number because I'd like to follow up with you. I'd like to set up a coffee with you. Oh, uh, uh, okay. They write it down and you know what? Just because they forgot their business cards doesn't mean that I'm not going to get a chance to meet with somebody that I want to get to know. Because you know what? In this pocket right over here are my business cards. When you hand me a business card, it goes into this pocket because you look really silly when you're going, um, I got a card somewhere. I think, oh no, uh, oh, this is mine. Here, here, take this. I mean, think about it. How credible do you really look if you can't even hand out your business card without sounding like you're swallowing broken glass? I mean, think about that. You want to look smooth. That's your first impression. You want to have a plan. So what I do is I naturally pull out my card, I hand it, face it to them, let them know that on the back is a line card of 30,000 items that we carry. So I'm making it very comfortable for our, our interaction. I, and I'm not saying everyone has that ability to put something on their cards front and back that by some requirements they have, but you at least hand them a card and say, oh, here's, here's a card of mine if you don't mind me sharing. Even make them ask for the card. Make them want that card, not just throw it at them. I mean, cards don't cost that much, but there's still a representation of you, so think about that. So what you want to do is, when you're handing that card, you want it to be something to go, you know, I want to follow up with this person. I want to set up a coffee. The other thing is, don't be that person when you go to a networking event that is going to tell your life story to a complete stranger. Because you know what? I want to know about you, but I really don't want to hear about you for the next 35 minutes when there's 400 other people in the room. I'd like to meet you. I'd like to make a connection, see if we have a fit, as Bill said. We might, we might not, but I'm not going to spend all day with you because I want to meet other people, and I want you to meet other people. I mean, raise your hand if you're the type of person who goes to an event and talks to the people you know. Okay? I try not to. People come up. But the thing is, you already know them. Grab a beer with them later. Grab a coffee. Go have lunch. Go for a walk. I want to meet people I don't know. I already know you. I like you. You're friends of mine. But if you do know someone, maybe you look at it as an opportunity to introduce them to somebody else. I know Anna and I were at an event, and someone said, oh, you guys know each other. How do you know each other? And she's standing there quite innocently. I say, oh, we were in prison together. <laughs> and this terrified look on her face was, huh? What happened? <laughs> but the whole point is, is that it's someone I thought she might want to meet, and they weren't going to forget her because of what I said, and they're going to tie the two of us together without even realizing. So every time they think of one of us, they think of the other. So it actually helps both of our business. I mean, I'll admit I'm the better looking half of the two of us, right, Anna? No, I'm not. Okay. But the whole point is this. Help other people grow their business because you know what? If I got Anna two new customers in a networking event just by being silly, ridiculous, and memorable, why wouldn't she want to think of me? Because every time she thinks of that person, guess who she thinks of? Me. So it's one of those things that by helping other people, you make yourself top of mind as well, but you're still helping other people first. You always want to find out, how can I help you before how can I help myself? Because no one wants to help someone who's me, 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 gimme, 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 just for me. But if you can connect somebody with somebody that they don't know and help them, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Good example, I had a customer call off the web and he wanted to stop by my office. Honestly, there's really nothing at my office, but okay, you're welcome to come by. All of our product is in co-locations right around the corner. So he comes by, he talks, and I ask the question, what can I do for you that has nothing at all to do with what I do? This is a, a gentleman who just moved to the area because he's working with a military organization that houses cars for our military personnel. He goes, well, I'm gonna probably need to get shirts with our name on it, things like that. I said, I got you covered. So I said, my guy, Jeff, if he's interested in your business, 
he'll call you. He goes, well, can I have his number? I said, no. I said, because if Jeff doesn't care enough to call you, then he, then he doesn't deserve your business. Well, Kenny got a call before he actually left my parking lot. He was ready to pull out, and I called my guy, Jeff. I said, Jeff, call this guy right away. I said, he's going to need shirts. Kenny answered the phone and said, this is Kenny. Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm Mark's friend. I uh, sell shirts. He goes, you know, you're flipping kidding me. I'm not in the parking lot yet. <laughs> so what happened? Number one, I looked good. Number two, Jeff looked good. Number three, what I didn't even know is that Jeff is actually working on a Wounded Warrior 5K, and they had a connection there, and guess who's getting the business? Taken care of. Guess who's getting the office by business? Me. So who, did, who lost there? Nobody. Everybody won. That's a win-win-win is obviously a big win. And you want to do that as much as possible because if you can make big wins happen, you're going to be memorable and people are going to talk about you even when you're not even there. That's the best publicity you can get. You're not even in the room and you hear from other people, oh yeah, so-and-so was talking about you today. Really? Were they saying good things, I hope? Uh, yeah, great. That's what I like to hear. Okay, so next, you're out there talking to people, okay? As we said, think about when you meet somebody, the first thing you should think about when you hear what they do, who do I know they'd like to meet? Because a lot of times we think about how can they help me, think about who you can connect them with. Ask them questions about themselves because everyone likes to talk about themselves. So they think it's a great conversation. I even had a guy come up to me recently and say, Mark, last time we met, I, I don't think we talked about you. I don't even know what you do. Other than office supplies, can we meet again and talk about you? Okay, sure, I can talk about me, that's good. We'll do that, so we set up another meeting and talked about me. But he realized that I cared enough to try to connect him, which I did, and help him with what he needed, and I didn't even bring myself up. So just think about that. Who have you talked to recently and talked only about yourself and not given them the chance to share about them or what they're looking for? Think about that for a second. Next, when you're, when you're out networking, it's great to connect with people. Everyone has a different strategy for LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I kind of call it, I guess, business Facebook. So what, what bothers me is I'll meet someone at a, a networking event and I get a Facebook request from them. I'm like, personally, I don't think so because you know what? That's my friends, those are people. I mean, you have no need to be in that circle. Maybe you'll earn the trust to be in that circle later on, but over time, think of, I almost think it's creepy that you met me for 35 seconds, you wanna be my Facebook friend? Yeah, I don't think so. Also, with LinkedIn, I have a strategy that's different from most. I'm kind of, I'll call myself a LinkedIn snob. And I'll tell you why. Because if you come to me and you say, Mark, I see that you're connected to a certain person. Can you connect me? Well, other than the owner of or the president of one of my suppliers, I'm going to know them. Because if you come to me, what I don't want to say is that I, I'm not sure who they are. Because you're trusting me enough to come to me and say, Mark, can you possibly connect me? This would help my business. I see you're connected to Sam Jones. Well, if I go, Sam Jones? Okay, sure. Um, who's Sam Jones? I don't look as credible. So that's in my personal view. And I'm not saying that everyone doesn't have different views on LinkedIn because there are different strategies. Some people say, I shook their hand. I made eye contact. I'm, I want, I'm a connector. I want to meet everybody. And that's fine. I'm not saying there's my way is right and their way is wrong or anything like that. But I'm saying my personal way is I know that someone in this room comes to me and says, Mark, I was on your LinkedIn and I saw you're connected to Bill Pernot. I want to know Bill. I want to be able to connect you to Bill. For example, I saw that Bill is, was connected to a gentleman who worked at a law firm. Bill helped make that connection because he said he was kind enough to know him well enough to connect me. About eight months later, I have the business, thanks to Bill. Another scenario happened actually more recently than that. Um, I was looking, you know how Facebook and LinkedIn have news feeds? Look at who people are connected to. They're connecting with people all the time. If they just connected with them. The chances are that they're fresh in their mind are pretty high. So there's a lawyer that I do business with very, very often. And I saw he's connected to another lawyer. I, I really didn't know the lawyer, but I thought, huh, let's see how big this firm is. Well, I had about five lawyers. It was in downtown Clayton, right in my sweet spot. I'm like, perfect. So I sent Mike an email. Hey, Mike, how well do you know this guy? He'd be a perfect fit to help me grow my business just like you. Mike said, you know what? I know him very well. Let me send an email. Mike sends an email to this gentleman. He said, listen, copies me back. I am not your guy at, the comp at, at our firm, but I've copied in Diane. She is. Diane, please talk to Mark. Hi, Diane. I'm Mark. About an hour later. I was, we were copied on an email. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. Oh, yeah, I saw that. What can I do for you? How can, how can I help you? Well, here's what I'm looking for. 
Well, about five orders later in two months, I think it was a su successful connection that I invested about mm, three minutes in. And I called her yesterday. She said, Mark, I'm not ready to place an order until later this week. Well, I, I can hold on until Friday for an order. The point is, is that I'm utilizing my network, but also I expect my network to utilize me. It's not a gimme, 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 it's a share. And I even tell people, when I connect with you on LinkedIn a lot of times, the first thing I'm gonna do, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna look through your connections. And I'm gonna make a list, I'm gonna come to you and say, listen, please look through mine as well, but if you happen to know some of these people, I'm, try I'm looking to grow my business. My business, unlike some, is a huge numbers game. I know, for instance, that Bill, Bill, can I ask you a question, how many new clients in a year would, would be great for your business within reason? How many new would be great for my business? Yeah, new for your business, your consulting business. Uh, I just need about 15 to 20. 15 to 20 a year. I aver need to average about one new account every single day. There's a big difference between, we'll call it 350 and 15. Mine is more of a numbers game. My average sale is a lot smaller than Bill's is. So you have to look at your industry and say, okay, where, what are my goals? What do I need to do to be, in my terms, successful? So think about that. What, how many people do you need to connect with as customers, clients, in the next year? Think about that for a second. Write that number down for me. Question. How many people you need to be connected to as far as for customers? How many customers do you need? Not, I, I'm sorry if I was confusing that. My apologies. So let me, right, let me restate my question. How many new customers do you need in a year? I apologize. That you, I agree. Your question wasn't clear. So thank you for asking. Yes, Bill. Sure, I'd be glad to. I'd like to share with how I got such a network. Honestly, I go to multiple networking events every week. As I mentioned before, I've got multiple prongs to my network. I go to my e for e meeting monthly. A lot of months I'll meet with at least one person out of that, outside that group for a coffee or a drink after work, whatever it might be, to get to know about them business and personal wise because that adds to my bench of people, my network of people. Whether it be that they're great at Taekwondo or they're a marketing person, whatever it might be. They could be on my bench for multiple things. Believe it or not, I have even friends, kids that are on my bench for certain things they're good at because they know more about it than I do. But to grow my network is just being involved in going out to different events, getting to know people that I don't know and talking to people when I go to each event. My goal when I go to an event is to leave with three opportunities for business every time. Whether it be a BNI meeting, a networking business meeting, whether it be a chamber of commerce meeting, Whatever it might be, my goal is to be memorable enough to leave with three opportunities every single time. Now, do I, do, do I succeed every time? No, I'll fail once in a while. I went to an event the other day that I thought was going to be a great event. You even passed up on a bigger event to find three people there. Okay, so I struck out on that one. But you know what? I struck out once to how many times do I get hits. Sometimes I even hit home runs. I went to one event. Got three new opportunities, I've already delivered one order. I should be doing a quote later today and I'll be following up on the third. That was well worth an hour and a half and a lunch. I mean, so you have to look at what your goals are for networking. So to get out there to a variety of different events, Bill, is what I've done. So I don't, and sometimes I'll just go once and realize that, eh, wasn't so great, but I might have met somebody. I might have connected them and gotten business because I never know where my next referral is coming from. It could be because we search well on the web. It could be because I have someone I know who's a private investigator. Out of the blue, he said, do you work with churches? Well, yeah, I do. I, they use supplies. I'd love to meet them. Well, great. Thank you. I'd, I'd love to give them a call. So we email or induced us. You never know where your next referral is coming from. So look at people as an opportunity to help you and also be willing to ask them, what can I do to help you out that has nothing to do with what I do? Because, again, when you're that resource and top of mind, they're going to think of you more than anybody else. And again, it might take them six months to ask that question to themselves for you and come to you and say, hey Mark, by the way, do you have this? Well, no I don't, but I do know someone who does. Because that's the way. If you're helping people, why wouldn't they want to help you back? The law of reciprocity is they want to help you because you help them. It's human nature. Versus saying, okay, do you have an order for me? Do you have, a, do you have an order? 
I mean, I have one guy who calls me. He's a, he's a nice guy. He's a customer. But the point is, he calls me randomly saying, do you have any referrals for me today? You know what? I got up today just to think of referrals for you. I had nothing else to do. <laughs> you mean you don't? Uh, no. Well, you don't, don't you know CPAs? Well, I, yeah. Um, it's 11, 10 in the morning, and I'm getting orders placed for my driver to take today. Can we talk later? I guess I can call you back. Great, thanks for fitting me into your schedule. I mean, what motivation do I have to help this gentleman? I really don't. It actually frustrates me because I'm trying to accomplish my day and take care of my customers so my business succeeds, and he's wanting me to stop my day to do what? Help him. He didn't ask me how, I, how he can help me, he just wants me to help him. Well, yeah, great, you bought a $30 ink cartridge for me. Yes, I do appreciate it, but you know, still you need to think of you need to think a different way possibly. So the next thing I want to talk about is how do I expand my network online? Well, if you're on LinkedIn, it's gonna say who you might want to be connected to, people you might know. Okay? At first I didn't get it until I kind of figured it out one day it just kind of popped in my head at one of those thoughts, my one thought a month, and it, it worked. And I look at who do you know? or who should I connect with for about 10 minutes a week. I look at who I could connect with. And the thing is, most of them I'm never gonna connect with. Because A, I know them, but they're really not gonna help me, so I met them at a meeting once, why would I really wanna get to know them? Well, I might, but I'm not gonna connect with them on LinkedIn, because they'll never write me back if I write them. I mean, there's one young lady who I met about a year and a half ago. She was a young CPA out there networking. She's at a yellow tie event, very nice. We met for coffee. And I put her on my bench. Well, I used to be a high school coach many years ago, and a young man I used to coach is now a financial advisor, and I asked the question, how can I help you? He goes, I would really love to meet a young CPA who doesn't have all these connections. I thought, I know exactly who I'm going to use. I haven't seen her for a year and a half, but I'm going to send her a message. Send her a message on LinkedIn, no response. I said, I'm really sorry. The person who wrote me back, he goes, that's a true shame, because I gave three referrals to a CPA last week. It could have been her. She blew a chance and the chance to sit on my bench. Now, is my bench something special? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It is to me, you're right, because it's my trusted resources. That young lady is off my bench. So the, I'm gonna have to find, I'm gonna find another young CPA to fit, fill her seat because her seat just got ejected, basically. She's gone because she let my friend down because she not only let my friend down, but guess what? She missed out on three opportunities for business. Now, I don't know if it's, Three opportunities for business is good for a CPA, but I'm going to guess it's probably pretty good if it's a monthly client. Just saying, I mean, I know what I pay my CPA, and that's some money. So the point is, is you have to be reliable. Next, when you're out there, look and see the types, the types of businesses that you want to meet. You remember I said target your business and say, who do I want to do business with? Well, keep that in mind because realistically, most of the people that I Google search that come up on the... Um, on the who do you know or who should you connect with, I don't know them. Just like that one lawyer, I had no clue who this guy was, but I knew he was with a law firm. So I Googled the name of the firm. I was like, huh, that's a pretty good fit. So again, for some businesses that might be a little tougher than others, but look and see what, who you want, think who might be connected to these people, and then see who, the, who those people are connected to that you know. Who's your you might be connected by four people. So who are those four people and which one would be most likely to help you out? Give them a call, shoot them an email, ask them how well do you know this person, but also don't forget to put in that email, the most important line is, how can I help you today? Is there anything I can do for you? Don't just ask for their help, ask to help them back. And when they do, don't think, oh, I can't believe they asked me for help. Well, you just asked them for help. So make sure that you actually are sincerely asking or trying to find ways to grow their business or be relevant to them if you're asking them to help you and be relevant for you. Make sense? Okay. So, once you get that connection, some people think, oh, I got the connection, I'm going for the deal, I'm gonna slam dunk this, I'm gonna close it. Wrong. Let me ask you a question. If I burned a bridge with one of you because I didn't handle one of your referrals right, who would give me another referral? No. So when someone refers me to one, a person that they know, the first thing I do is make sure, number one, I make sure that person looks good who referred me. They were kind enough to say, Here's the, here's the gate opening to the bridge, walk across to my person. So number one is I compliment the person, I thank them for taking my call, 
I make sure that I do my best to be good for the person who referred me. They did me the favor, because you know what? If I burn that bridge, I'm never getting another referral. Whether this person orders or not, they become a client, referral partner, whatever, I'm done. So number one, make someone else look good first. Number two, find out in a low pressure situation how you can work with this person and if it's feasible. Don't be afraid to say no. If you find out that you're not the best person, there's nothing wrong with saying no. You know, I would really love to help you out, but I'm not the person who can find Mexican jumping beans for you. I really don't know who it is, I'm really sorry, but thank you so much for your time. But then the, the gold is when you get to that third step. You find out that there is something you offer that they offer too, or they need, and you can offer it, and then you have a client. So Bridget and I am gonna call you out on this one. You, you knew that. No, but here's the thing. How I got to know Bridget was, I went to college with a gentleman named Tim. Tim works at a TV station where Bridget happens to work as well. And Tim and I, I mean, we've, we're acquaintances. And I said, I would love to do business at your TV station. He said, well, let me see what I can do. Let me find out who it is. Well, what do you know? He knows Bridget. Well, it just so happens that that opened a connection for me to do business with Bridget for a little while. They had a little change over at the station, no big deal. But then she also invited me to another event, which is why her and two of her friends are here today. So does networking work? I don't know, you tell me. I, don't, I think it's overrated personally, I don't know how to do it. Sounds like a waste of time. But you know what? I never know what connections are gonna happen from her bringing two friends today. Maybe they know someone who'd be a target client for me. I'm not gonna say no to referrals, by the way. But the whole point is, is that they might also be a connection to one of you. You never know. Here's a good example. I brought someone to my BNI networking meeting who was a lawyer because the lawyers in my group like to meet other lawyers. My only intention was to introduce this gentleman who is never going to be a weekly member of this group to meet the other lawyers. And he did. Mission accomplished, right? A month later, the mortgage guy in our, com in our organization said, who brought this guy? I go, well, well I did. Why? He goes, well, his dad just did a $125,000 mortgage with me. I'm like, sweet, I never planned on helping you out at all. <laughs> never, it was on my mind to help you out. Two weeks later, guess what? He stood up and said, remember that guy who Mark brought who did a $125,000 mortgage? His brother just did a $175,000 mortgage. So this gentleman got $300,000 in mortgages because I thought to bring somebody to introduce him to the lawyers. Again, I never wanted to help this other gentleman. It was never my goal, but it did. So guess what? When I said I want to meet title companies, guess who was all about introducing me to the owners of title companies? That's right. This gentleman, was, he was introducing me right and left. Some worked, some didn't, and that's fine. But the whole point is, he, I mean, I don't know what a mortgage person makes on $300,000 worth of mortgages, but I'm guessing he did okay. He might be able to buy a Tootsie Roll or two. So the whole point is, is that by helping people and presenting people to your network, you never know what people's buying decisions are going to be, what they're looking for, and who they know that might be looking for something in two weeks, a month, six months, and they might be able to remember that other person if they were memorable. Again, if, you don't, if you're not memorable and you're not standing out from a group, why would someone want to remember you? I go to a local chamber meeting, they have a breakfast once a month, and People who know me, this won't surprise you, but everyone stood up and said, hi, I'm so-and-so, I do so-and-so. And I stood up and said, who would like to be on a beach holding a drink? Well, that's what I want you to feel like in your office when you deal with my company. We're going to make it like you're on vacation. Well, I, I did this as just kind of a goofy thing just to be silly and me. Well, the funny thing is, is the next meeting, the person in charge of the chamber said, everyone come prepared to introduce yourself the way Mark does. I'm like, really? Sweet. Well, the funny thing is, is everyone's going to be looking and thinking of me. I was just being silly and trying to promote my business, but guess what happened? Everybody now in the whole room, 30, 40 people are going to be thinking, huh, that's a cool idea. Mark got that. Well, guess what? Hopefully, if I've done a good job of getting to know these people, they're going to know what Mark does. And when they have a need for something, or they know someone who needs what I do, guess who's getting business, hopefully? That would be me. Did it work? I guess so. So I'll be going on vacation thanks to their business. So. And I do have a good travel agent to get me there, so we're good. So talking about that travel agent, it's kind of funny. I called her for an ink, ink order for her printer, which she, she placed, and I said, by the way, I said, did that one banker ever come to you? He was going to do like a wedding, a wedding des destination wedding somewhere. She goes, oh my gosh, oh, thank you so much for the referral. He actually is going to be taking X amount of people to Punta Cana, Mexico, to this resort. It's great. And I kind of jokingly said, 
well, don't I get a free vacation? I was kind of kidding. She goes, well, you tell me anywhere you want to have a condo in the coastal U.S., and I'm paying for it for a weekend. I just caused myself a problem. Number one, you find someone to go with because the right woman's still not out of prison yet. And number two, I don't know where I want to go yet because my boss won't let me off work. <laughs> so the point is I've created myself another problem, but I, I, have a, I have a condo somewhere wherever I want to go in the coastal U.S. So, you know, we'll figure that out later. But the whole point is I, I was kind of being sarcastic and silly my, being myself, but the whole point is I brought her business, and she's like, yeah, you brought me so much business. Why wouldn't I do that? I'm like... Okay, I'm not going to argue with you. I mean, it wasn't my goal, it was being silly. So next thing I want you to do is make sure that when you get things, when you get these referrals done, you follow up. And I know Karen's going to talk about that, so definitely listen to what she has to do. Because you know what? Creating opportunities and not following up. And again, am I perfect with that? Eh, I, I make a mistake once in a while. I won't say I'm perfect. Once every year I might miss one. But the point is, is be reliable, do what you say you're going to do, and connect can make those connections after the fact the best way possible. And again, we all get busy, myself included, so be as perfect as you can on that. But the next thing I want you to do is pull out something called thank you for your help. This is something I created. This is, now, this one I did create by myself. And again, please adjust this for what you need because I know this won't help everybody. But this goes back to, you need one? Um, here we go, right here. Can you pass that back, please, to her? Um, so basically, this is a way to get people who trust you who believe in you, who want to help you, to help you. Because you know what? How many people in this room, when they say office supply guy, would you think of your kid's daycare? Exactly. But you know what? Little do you know, we have crayons, construction paper. We even have paper towels, wipes. Heck, if they even have some adult kids, we have adult diapers in stock, folks. I can have those to you by noon. But the point is, is that there's a lot of things I offer people don't know I offer or don't even know I want to do business with these type of people. Look at that list. I mean, Don, do you know an insurance agent? Uh, yeah. Okay, I was just wondering. Don's an insurance agent, by the way. So the, the whole point is this. Do you have a doctor, a dentist? Maybe you happen to have a chiropractor. Dan, do you know a chiropractor? A few? Well, <laughs> see, that would be a great referral for me, just so you know. Because they don't have huge needs, but they do have needs. They have an office, things like that. Do you have the person you're talking to? Do they have a spouse? Anna, what does your boyfriend do? Roofing salesman. I, I wonder if the, the roofing salesman place, they actually have printers there. I don't know. Did you ever think of that before? Just saying. <laughs> Example A. So this is something, or none of you drove here today. You don't have a mechanic that you go to. Guess what? We have wipes that can wipe oil off your hands in less than a minute with one quick wipe. We also do shop tickets so you can make sure this, that your ticket doesn't get wet so your car gets fixed correctly. It doesn't get blurry. You never knew that. I wouldn't expect you to. It's my business. It's not yours. But I would appreciate the connection because I can't possibly know the 10,000 mechanics in town. But you know what? Even if those mechanics spend $100 every quarter with me, that's 100 bucks more than I didn't have before. So think about that. Make a list for yourself. Adjust this to fit what you need. Maybe it's people in different industries. Maybe whatever. I mean, you know what you, you have to know what you need. So look at these. I mean, Hopefully you go to the dentist at least once every three to four years, or more often than that. Might be a good thing. I mean, I sometimes mail them in, you know, but no, I'm kidding. No, but the point is, is think about the people that can help you that you've never thought of who can help you. Make a list. Hand them to people of professions, of types of people that are in your life already that you never thought to think of, wow, I wonder if that person, again, when they bring somebody up, whether it be an uncle, a neighbor, what do they do? Oh, what, how did you meet? Oh, you played racquetball with them. Great. Is that, did they do it for a living or are they do something else? Oh, they're a banker. Great. What, what bank are they at? Oh, they're the vice president of a local bank. Really? That's good to know. Nice to know that. Excellent. So make a list and even hand this out to a couple of people. Maybe some trusted clients. Even some relatives who never thought to help you out would be glad to help you out. They're your uncle, for goodness sake. Why wouldn't your uncle help you out? Of course, they love you. They're gonna, they probably change your diapers and everything else. Why wouldn't they help you out? Hand this to your uncle and say, could, could you fill this out? I'm really trying to grow my business. Could you help me with doing that? Do you have no any of these people? Where do you take your car? Would you be glad to make a quick introduction? It can be over the phone. It can be an email introduction. Because the coldest call that I ever make is this. Hi, Don. My name is Mark. Um, I believe you might know Bill Pernat, correct? Absolutely. 
you know, Bill, well, Bill and I were having a conversation. Um, I actually help him with all his printer cartridges off, supplies and paper. Okay. Well, I'm a local business owner. He thought enough of you to mention you to me in a conversation. Would you have two minutes? We could just talk and see if I could possibly help you the same way I help Bill. Sure. How tough was that? Is that of, hi, I'm Mark. I'm peddling crap for your office. Please buy from me. <laughs> or, hi, I know you're busy. You don't want to talk to me. I'm probably not going to get your business, but do you have a minute? <laughs> I mean, let's be real, folks. We're all busy. I mean, the way things are going, especially even with small business owners, I've got 15, 20 things going every second. Do I really want to fit you in? Make me fit you in. Make it so you want to be memorable enough. Or say, I got something the other day. He goes, oh my gosh, Mark, I'm so busy. Sorry, got, I'll talk to you later. Bye. I hung up quicker than he did because I wanted to respect his time so he knew that I cared about his day. I realized Realize where you are in the food chain with, that, with them. Some people think that office supplies are the most important thing you're selling them. I gotta be, the, be number one. They've gotta talk to me when I wanna talk to them. Guess what? I'm the bottom of the food chain and I know it until you run out. Then I shoot to the top and I plumb it right back down. So if I work with people the way they wanna be worked with, it's kinda like, I don't know if any of you heard of the platinum rule. The golden rule is do unto others in general. Well, that's usually do unto others the way you would want it done for you. The platinum rule is do unto others the way they would want to. Just because you like going to Starbucks, maybe they're not a coffee drinker. Maybe they hate Starbucks. Ask them, what, find out what they like through conversation. Maybe they like going to Applebee's. Maybe they like going to a sporting goods store. Get them a gift certificate for where they want to go. I had someone give me a gift certificate to somewhere I was never going to be. I didn't want to go. I was sitting there at the register going, okay, I got $5.83. What else can I buy? Okay, let's see. I'll take uh, chiclets. There we go. Got chiclets. I mean, it it didn't. It wasn't a it wasn't a warm fuzzy feeling. Find out how they want to be rewarded. Talk to them. They don't have to know why you're asking the question. Just ask questions. Have a conversation with them so they know how to be how you know what they like. They know what you like, and you just never know. Sometimes a reward will come through. Maybe it won't. That's never my goal. It was not my goal to get a weekend condo visit somewhere. It was I wanted to help this person out because they're nice. They're friendly. They're helpful, they're a customer, and they're a great resource, and they do everything they say they're gonna do. So think about that. So basically, in wrapping up, I hope that I was able to help you out in some little way, give you some little nugget to help you grow your business, because if I did, then I feel this was a good use of both of our times. If I didn't, then we'll have to figure it out. But if uh, you'd ever like to ask any questions, I'd love to answer them now or later. Call, email, whatever you'd like. So are there any questions I can answer? Did I do such an amazing job, you don't have one question to think about to ask me right now. Yes? Good question. So what percent of my week do I spend meeting people new or existing? Um, I would say I, I'm most people, I know some of you have heard this from me, I run, help run my business on a daily basis so I take meetings before and after work. So I'll probably do five to ten meetings a week a lot of people, um, I know Don's one of these people who stacks um, meetings in a row at the same location, which is very, very efficient to do, and it's a great way to get a lot of people met with. But whenever I go to an event, again, there's no set formula on meeting new people. It's making sure when I'm at events, because I can't control who's going to be there, but I do my best to set up me meetings afterwards with as many people as it makes sense to. There's no set formula on that, but it's the formula of going to different events. So I probably go to two or three events a week of some kind, and then try to set up meetings afterwards when it makes sense. And again, the meetings a lot of times are over the phone because it's a lot, you can get a lot more done over the phone. And what I do, it's not like heart surgery where you have to be there on site. A lot of times I'll have people, you know, Steve was lo looking for a chair and we, I gave him some things to look at online with me. I helped someone online yesterday versus meeting with them because you know what? Meeting in person isn't always respecting their time. If you're not respecting their time, why would they respect yours? Dan, what do you got? You're incredibly positive all the time. I met you four years ago and uh -huh. remembered you from then when you and I met. Right. What do you do on a daily basis to stay so positive? You wake in the morning, you do affirmations. What do I do to be positive? Oh, boy. You know what? Believe it or not, sometimes it can be anything but the truth. You think I am. Some, but the thing is, no one wants to deal with someone who's a... A Debbie Downer going, yeah, my day sucks. This happened. This, I mean, you know what? Some days I don't have great days, but you'd never know it. 
You have to know me pretty darn well. Even people who know me pretty darn well don't always know when I'm not having a good day. Because you know what? Some days I'm not. Today I'm having a great day because I get to talk to you guys and listen. Okay. But the whole point is, is that you never know when I'm not having a good day. You have to know me pretty darn well to know that. But because the, the point is, is you have your own problems. You have your own things. As I saw on Facebook one time so, someone that I know put post something saying, you know, if I had to trade my problems for years, I'd probably keep my own. So we all have challenges in our life. I mean, hopefully they're very few and our successes are a lot more. But keep in mind that everyone has things going on, whatever that might be, whether it be with a coworker, a spouse, a neighbor, or whatever, an unfortunate illness. But, you know, just be positive. And that's obviously, I did a good job because you had asked that question. So, yes, Steve, what do you have? See, how do you track what people are looking for? Do you just have an amazing memory, or how does that work? Honestly, I, I believe it or not, I do remember a lot of it. I mean, it goes back to being memorable. I've, I heard one time, this was not something that I created, but you have a space in your head for two of everything, every profession. So if someone says realtor, two realtors come to mind. The only profession you have one for is office supplies. That's me. No, okay, no. no okay. <laughs> no. But other than that, you have two. No. So think about it. Think about, for instance, if I say the word plumber, raise your hand if you have one person pop in your head. Keep your hand up if you have two people that's in your head. Okay, so three, four, about a good chunk of you have two people. If I said name 15 plumbers, you're probably not going to be able to pull it off. So there's space for two. You want to be one of the two people in that industry that people think of when you say, I'm looking for a, insert the blank here. How do you do it? Again, it goes back to being memorable. Find a unique way to present yourself. And again, and this to me, I realize it's easier for guys and girls. Raise your hand if you've ever seen me not wearing a company polo shirt during business hours. Anybody here? Have you ever, for those who are at E for E, how many times have you seen me not wear a green polo shirt? This is my, my E for E shirt right here. When I do B&I and other networking, it's usually a red shirt. They don't even know I have a green shirt. One time person said, I'll give you five bucks if you show up with anything but a red shirt. So I did, I said, thanks to this person, I decided not to wear a red shirt today. The whole point is, I realize ladies have a lot more fashion than you do, but have a, a, a similar look, whether it be floral prints or the way you wear your hair, because if you do something different all the time, they're never gonna remember you. I had a guy, this happened actually about three weeks ago. He remembered he met me and where he met me. And the funny thing is, he was memorable enough. I remember I met him by the food right over in that corner. So he was memorable enough for me as well. Either I hadn't thought of him in a year, it was one of those things that I remembered him as well. So be memorable and figure out a way to make it so people will remember you for what you do and who you are. Anna, what? Yes, she's always in heels. Well, you're like four foot two without heels? Okay. No, no, okay. No, but, but no, Anna, to Anna's point, she has a look. She's always wearing heels. People know that if they see Anna, they're always, they're always going to have that look. So whatever it is, whether the way you wear your hair, whatever it might be. So just think of how you can be you and be consistent so people remember you. you I mean, these people know that they met me and I don't even know them because I didn't remember. One guy even said recently, goes, obviously I wasn't memorable enough for you. I'm like, sorry. I mean, I had no clue I'd met him before. So thank you so much for your time. I hope this helped. Have a great day.